Hello, my name is Esen Faruqi. I'm working in RPS Consulting Private Limited for last two years. I'm working here as a Citrix certified instructor. I basically deal with Citrix and VMware virtualization technologies. So in this, today we'll look at a short, short introduction about uh, Zen Desktop 7.5. We we'll look at the architecture of Zen Desktop 7.5 and what all you can do with Zen Desktop 7.5, right? So, in previous versions, Citrix used to have a Zen app and a Zen Desktop. From 7.0 onwards, they have introduced a unified architecture which can do applications as well as desktops using a single console. So, the you know the, as an administrator, we don't have to manage two separate consoles, one for uh, Zen Desktop and one for Zen app. It's a unified architecture, so we can cover both the aspects, whether it's a desktop virtualization or an application virtualization uh, solution from the same exact console. So we'll look at the architecture of how this has evolved and how this has changed. So we'll understand the architecture of Citrix Zen Desktop and ZenApp 7.5. So just giving you an insight of how this came up in Citrix Zen Desktop 7, uh, that was a single product that was Zen Desktop 7 and which used to have an app edition. So Zen Desktop 5, the previous version, used to handle only the client operating systems. Then Citrix came up with Zen Desktop 7, which can handle client operating systems as well as server operating systems. So you can publish your applications as well as your desktops from a single product. In 7.5, they came up again with two versions. One is Zen, Zen Desktop 7.5 and Zen App 7.5. From the product perspective, nothing has changed. If you install Zen Desktop 7.5 or Zen App 7.5, the, the, exactly the same binary is get installed. So nothing changes on that front. It's more of for the administrators to understand and for the uh, you know the companies who are using Citrix products to understand that there is a Zen App and Citrix will be working on Zen App also. So now we have two products which have the same exact architecture, which have the same exact consoles. The only thing is that one is used for publishing applications and one is used for publishing desktops, which gives quite an edge to the administrators and the engineers who are working on it. Because from the same console, they can publish their applications, they can publish their desktops. They don't have to install another product altogether to do a particular job. Right. So we'll understand the architecture of Zen Desktop 7.5 now. So from uh, you know Zen Desktop 7 onwards, you can uh, you know use your uh, uh, the complete uh, you know architecture or a complete site to publish your hosted applications. So as we see in the slides also, right, they have your endpoints where you have your receivers installed and you have your Zen Desktop components. Basically, the Zen Desktop components here we talk about the storefront, which is a next generation web interface server. Right. We talk about controllers. Now they were called as desktop delivery controllers before. Now we only call them as controllers, Citrix controllers. Right. We don't have Zen app anymore. Right. The IMA architecture which was there before, we don't use it anymore now. So we have only the controllers which will be handling and managing most of the communication part through storefront. The license server. Right. So those are a part of your Zen desktop components. Then you need your hypervisors. As because the companies were moving towards more and more virtualized architecture, Citrix also moved towards the same architecture and they got your Zen Desktop 7.x. So 7 onwards, they're working on more of a virtualized infrastructure. So you have your processing space, right, where you have your Windows to, uh, 2012 R2 or 2008 R2 virtual machines, which have your applications installed, right, and you can publish those applications using Zen Desktop. Uh, that component is actually a Zen app component. What you're doing is what you used to do, like publishing applications through Zen app, but the console has remained the same now. 7.x onwards, single console. So they are merging both the architectures. They've actually merged both the architectures now. Right? So you can publish your uh, applications also. Those are your hosted applications, the applications which are running inside your data center. And you can use it from any device anywhere and any time. That is something which Zen app 6.5, that was the last release of Zen app, where we used to use that to uh, publish applications. Now you can do it from Zen desktop also. You can publish your server operating system machines. So in uh, the previous versions, we used to have a concept called as uh, hosted shared desktops, right? Where you give your 20, 2008 R2 VMs, uh, you know, running remote desktop services to the uh, users and they used to log into that using the IC connections, using Citrix connections basically. You can do the same thing with your Zen desktop components also. So again, a wide shift from the Zen app architecture. There is no IMA anymore. 
right it will be all based on an architecture which is called as fma flex cache management architecture we'll be looking at a complete set of architecture also later in the same module you can uh, deploy your desktop operating system machines which can be windows 7 windows 8 or 8.1 Right, you can publish those for the end users, which is which basically covers your virtual desktop infrastructures or the VDI infrastructures as we talk about, and the end users which have receivers can access those machines. So it gives quite an edge to the uh, you know the administrators and the uh, the company where they can host the desktops inside their uh, data centers, and the people or the you know the end users can access it from any device, and they can work on it, and all the data will remain inside the company premise. So it gives a lot of edge. To the companies also you can access your remote pcs also for example you have your uh, you know blade pcs or you have your workstations the use case can be like for example you have you have a company uh, the company is working on high-end uh, graphical applications and you know uh, you need a lot of uh, gpus which are present on the workstation so in so you can control those uh, you know workstations or your blade pcs through zen desktop Right, you users can connect to their physical machines using your Zen desktop components. Again, something which uh, you know helps a lot uh, uh, because if you have existing infrastructure, you already have the workstations, you have already bought the workstations. So how will you control and give access to the end users? So you can do that also giving remote access PC. Right, you can do streamed VHDs using your provisioning services. So provisioning services have been there for quite a long time now. So you can, uh, you know, create V disks for your 2012 R2 or 2008 R2 or any operating system for that matter, and stream that particular, uh, you know, V disk to the end user machine or to the virtual machines. And users can connect to those virtual machines. So you don't have to install an operating system on all the machines. You just create one VDisk, which gives a quite, uh, you know, a flexibility to the administration team so that if they need like 50, uh, you know, different virtual machines or 50 different machines, they can deploy from the template. Yes, that option is always there. Or what they can do is they can just, you know, uh, create a VDisk out of it and stream it to the uh, you know the virtual machines or the end user machine and user doesn't need to have an operating system He just powers on his machine and he gets an operating system. This is based on your real-time uh, Streaming where an operating system is streamed in real time to the end user machine Which gives again a lot of flexibility as we talked about You have your local VM support using Zen client so you can use your Zen client software to uh, you know uh, to locally provide the virtual machines to the uh, you know end users so they uh, like you have windows 7 windows 8 which you directly install on the top of your hardware you can install zen client zen client is a hypervisor for your client systems or like your desktops and laptops where you install directly it on the hardware and create multiple machines on your laptops like uh, you have vmware workstation from vmware what it does is you have to install it on the top of a windows 7 or windows 8 or you know any mach any operating system it needs an operating system zen client doesn't need an operating system you directly install it and then the administrators can push virtual machines to the end user machine uh, end user device where your zen client is running and give them local vm support also where the users can take the machines offline and work on it and as soon as they come back into the network the changes will sync you have your local application access uh, citrix used to have a product called a citrix streaming profiler but unfortunately, they are not going to work on it any further, but they are going to support Microsoft App V for, uh, you know, application streaming. So the as an administrator, we can publish your App V packages or, you know, streamed applications through your App V and use Zen Desktop to publish it for the end users. So end users can, you know, download those, uh, you know, application packages or profiles onto their machines and run it on their machines which Citrix Streaming Profiler used to do for Citrix, but now Citrix has stopped working on it and they are going ahead with Microsoft App V. So you'll not see Citrix Streaming Profiler from 7.x onwards, but you'll see an App V, right? Uh, as a part of the training, we don't cover App V in the training. We only talk about App V because it's a separate product. It's a different product from Microsoft and there's a separate training uh, from Microsoft and App V. So looking at the overall infrastructure and Citrix components, you have your external and internal users, right? So you have uh, users can come from internal, uh, you know, inside the company premise or they can come from the internet or the untrusted, uh, you know, zone where it comes from the internet. They enter your DMZ. DMZ is your uh, perimeter network. 
where your net scalers and access gateways sit. So what Citrix has done now is uh, access gateway although comes as a separate product, you can have access gateway with net scaler also and they call it net scaler gateway. So you can uh, configure uh, you know gateway or the gateway functionality on the top of net scaler. And net scaler as we know can is used as a load balancer. It does a lot more other things also but primarily it is used as a load balancer. So which can be used. So users coming in will hit your net scalers. Net scaler will forward the request to your storefront servers. Storefront servers are the next generation of web interface. Till now if you have worked on any Citrix product you would you would know that we used to have a web interface server. The last version which Citrix released was 5.4. Now Citrix is not uh, you know going with web interface but they're going with something called as a storefront server. So in this course we mainly talk about storefront servers. We don't discuss a lot about web interface. Then you have your uh, you know uh, controllers from the Citrix point of view right so controllers are the connection brokers in Zenapp 6.5 or the previous versions we used to have your XML brokers and your uh, you know data collectors we don't have data collectors anymore we have controllers right you need your SQL server and you have to make your SQL server highly available because if your server, SQL server goes down uh, your complete infrastructure goes down because there's no concept of LHC which was there before. LHC what it used to do was it was a local host cache downloading a subset of information from the database to the uh, Zenapp servers. Now we don't have that so SQL server has to be highly available because SQL server will manage your static as well as dynamic entries of the complete Zen desktop and Zenapp site now. You need your Citrix license server which will be maintaining and managing all the Citrix licenses for different product editions and different products for that matter. Right? You need your uh, domain controller where you have all the users and computer accounts being created. You have your policies being created on that. You have your DNS, your DHCP servers and if you're using your internal certification authority that can also be installed on it. You need your profile management solutions and profile stores for managing the end user profiles that can also be used right you can go with Citrix profile management solution or you can go with your Microsoft roaming profiles also you have your hypervisor where you have all the virtual machines which will sit right your virtual machines will run on the hypervisors Zen desktop and Zen app supports all three major hypervisors which are there uh, from 7.x uh, you know 7.0 onwards uh, which is your uh, you know uh, VMware vSphere or your Citrix Zen server or Microsoft Hyper-V in 7.5, they added support for your cloud environment also, whether you're using Amazon EC2 or Citrix Cloud Platform. And if you're integrating it with your System Center Configuration Manager, that can also be done in your 7.5 and onwards. Then you have your, uh, you know, in Zenapp 6.5, we used to have something called as App Center to manage the complete farm. In Zen Desktop previous version, like the 5.6, which was the last release, we used to have something called as a Desktop Studio. Now Citrix has got a single unified console which is called as only studio. So studio can be used to manage everything, create machine catalogs, create delivery groups and deliver it to the end user machines. You have your provisioning services for streaming the VDisks. You have your Citrix director which can be used for uh, you know, monitoring the complete ecosystem which you have the complete site. And you have your uh, Citrix admin workstations where you can connect it through your director and monitor the complete activity. So that's all about the architecture of your Zen app and Zen desktop 7.5. Thank you.